Hi, nice to see you again. In this video, I will talk to you about one of the most common ways to do birding. I will tell you about the advantages and disadvantages. I will say you which is the setup I use in my camera, which is the camera gear I would recommend to use, and of course some recommendations on how to have the best day of birding. Hi, I'm Mario Killian and welcome back to another video. The most common way to birding is called to hike and shoot or to walk and shoot. And that's because you just choose a path, a way, a tour to do and carry your camera and every time you see the chance to take a good picture, you take this picture. There is no stress involved in this. You just walk and have a nice day walking around and taking the best picture. I think that the best way to start this video is telling you which is my recommendation of gear to use to have this nice hiking and shoot birding day. And of course the answer is very simple. Use the gear you have. No matter if you have a full frame camera, if you have an APC camera, an old camera, DSLR, mirrorless, don't matter about this. Even if the lens you have, no matter if you have a 140 millimeters lens, a 300 millimeters lens, or this Sigma 600 millimeter lens, or you can even have a high-end camera and high-end lens. But don't care about the camera gear. It doesn't will make you to get the best picture. Now, if you already don't have a camera gear, of course, I can recommend you some tips. For example, in the lens, to best for a hiking and shoot day is to have a zoom lens. It can be a zoom lens from 150 to 600, 180 to 600, 100 to 400. Even a 300 millimeter lens would be a good lens for a hiking and shoot day. If you still don't have a camera, of course, I would recommend you a mirrorless camera. It don't need to be a high megapixel camera. It can be, for example, a Nikon Z5 with 24 megapixel. Of course, if you can buy a full frame camera, it will be better because you can get more results and of course squeeze the best of the dynamic range of any picture. Of course, another gear I would recommend you and that's not about the camera gear is this shoulder strap. It's very comfortable. You have the camera on your side and you can take it up to take the picture as quick as you need. And I have walked already miles and miles with this and without any kind of problem. So consider it. What is my recommended setup? Of course, you need to consider that you have to be ready for action. You don't know in which moment a bird will start to fly or will cross in front of you. So I have my camera prepared for a fast action situation. And that means I use, I have prepared my camera with a high shutter speed, 1 over 1200, 1 over 600. Consider always that I'm using a 600 millimeter lens. Of course, my aperture is as wide open my lens permits. I use a focus mode in AFC continuous focus mode so that I can track the bird once it gets out from somewhere. And of course, I use a small focus area because there are a lot of trees and, and plants here and the birds will go between them and I need a small focus area to get the bird in focus and not the things that's around the bird. 
of course, I use the camera in manual mode with automatic ISO and every other setup of white balance uh, kind of pictures is all in automatic. I don't use any exposure compensation. I only let the camera as it is. For me, the most important thing is to use a fast shutter speed, wide open, autofocus continuous mode, and of course, uh, the, a little focus area. And so, the negative part, which are the most important disadvantage of this kind of birding day? Of course, that maybe you can get the perfect angle of the bird, that maybe you can get the best liked for the bird, because there is no a setup, there is nothing planned, and you can't hardly change the sight of the bird. So. These are the two main issues when you use this kind of birding day. Of course, you will need a lot of time. This will be a hiking day and you can take easily five, four or maybe more hours to take this nice path and get some good pictures. Of course, most pictures you will take will have not a nice background. It's mainly probable that you take a shot of the bird in a branch and can't prepare the background. But that's not something so terrible. And the other issue is that, luckily today it hasn't happened to me yet, that there are more people walking in these nice paths and these people can scare the birds and the birds fly away. But so you need a lot of patience. Well, in my opinion, one of the most important advantages of this kind of hiking and shoot birding day is that there is no stress involved. You don't have to prove nothing to nobody. You just want to take pictures for yourself. Of course, this is a very flexible way to take pictures of birds. You can take a pad, you can change the way, you can change the plants. You can uh, take pictures maybe of nice uh, flowers, of any other animal that maybe can cross you on the way. So it's a flexible day and you are not uh, forced to take pictures of only birds and the perfect picture of the bird. And of course, it's a day you don't need any kind of planning. You just take your camera gear and go out and take the best pictures. It can be in the morning, in the afternoon, you can take it the all day long. Don't care about the light, don't care about the best spot. Just go out and enjoy the ride on the nature, taking the pictures of the birds. And so, which are my recommendations to get the best out of a hiking and shooting birding day? Of course, the first one is make you a checklist. Camera, memories, battery loaded, the correct setup in the camera. Don't forget these basic terms. So this will be a hiking day. So consider to have a backpack with enough water, the correct shoes to walk through the woods, the correct jacket so you don't get cold. Another good tip is to try to walk in silence. Uh, generally the floor are full of dry leaves and when you walk they make a noise that can scare the birds. Like for example the helicopter passing over me now. Another important recommendation is try to walk a few meters, 100-200 meters and then uh, stay still and quiet and wait and search for what is happening around you. Are there birds? Are there still? 
they hear me and they are all quiet. So walk 200 meters and wait a few minutes if something happened. Then walk another 200 or 300 meters and stay still again and try to listen. Where are the birds? Are they still? They hear me coming, therefore they are not moving. And if I stay still for a while, they will start to move and have action again. And now, something very important I have to say. I can't end this video without saying thank you to Adam from Poland. Adam knew that my old Nikon D5600 failed. After 350,000 pictures, the Nikon won't work anymore. And Adam sent me from Poland this amazing Nikon Z5. All the pictures I will talk today and will show you in this video will be talked with this Nikon Z5 and my Sigma 600 millimeters. Adam, you can't imagine how happy I am with this new camera. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. And let's give you a hug. So thank you very much, Adam. And so, that's all for today. I really hope you liked this video. If so, maybe you consider to subscribe and give it a like so others can see this video too. Now, go out and take your best pictures and hope to see you next week. Bye-bye.